Welcome to the Weaves Guidebook, Grey Waters. This is the first barrel objective in Weaves, so keep in mind that while killing enemies is important, you won't get very much essence from doing so and want to focus on running the barrels whenever possible. This particular weave has two barrels, both of which you will need to run to open the portal. To start this map, my group has found it is most effective to trigger the first spawn, which contains a few leeches and a lot of maulers, and then fight them back essentially at the start of the map. If the full group moves forward towards the keep, you are likely to get stuck in the gatehouse as maulers will spawn in front of and behind the party, leaving very little room to handle the leeches. By backing up after triggering, you are likely to get the leeches to attack before the maulers can get to you, which makes them much easier to deal with. Once you've dealt with that, proceed to pick up the barrel. Picking up the barrel will spawn two hook rats, which can be easily dealt with in the keep if none of the ongoing spawns are coming or, if the spawner moved forward alone, can be killed by dragging them back to the party at the start of the map. I would suggest not bringing the entire party forward for the first barrel run. Fighting in the keep during a grey weave is unnecessarily risky and can lead to some unforced errors here and there, costing the party time as you have to divert to get good reses. Instead, it is entirely possible to have the spawner run the barrel by themselves, provided they have good mobility, and then make their way back to the party to clear out everything that has spawned. If the spawner has Wraith Walk or a good dash, they should be able to complete the barrel run and make it back to the party just fine. If they don't have those tools, however, they may find themselves stuck out as a great deal of enemies have spawned between them and the party. This could be a good time to abuse Leave and Rejoin, if necessary. Completing the barrel run will spawn an Assassin, and moving past the Deposit will spawn a Warp Fire Thrower and some Rattlings, so it will be important to be able to make it back to the party when completing the barrel. The reses on the waters maps are a little buggy. This is due to the map consisting of essentially two maps on top of each other, leading the game to think that you are either much further along than you are, or much closer to the start than you are. One example of this is a secret keep respawn point. Typically, when someone dies, it is imperative that the party backs up as far as possible to make sure that the respawns are in good positions to be rezzed. On waters, it actually can be beneficial to move forward to a specific location. If you are fighting on the top level of the map and someone dies, have one person move all the way to the far side of the top path, past the first deposit, and near the gate. If this is the farthest that someone in the party is when the dead player respawns, the game will try to spawn the captured player down in the cave at the bottom of the hill, where the second barrel is located. Because this cave is directly below a section of the keep, however, it will actually respawn the player in the keep, on the far left side. This only works for one player at a time. If two players died and you attempt this strategy, the first player to respawn would be in the keep as described, but the second player would be all the way down in the cave, making them very difficult to save. Because of this, if two players die, I would suggest backing up like normal, leading them to be respawned at the end of the top path. The benefit of respawning a player in the keep is twofold. First, it will allow them to be rezzed by the main party, which is far safer than if they were to be rezzed by the spawner and have to make their way back to the party. The second is that, as the section of the keep is registered as part of the cave below, rezzing someone here will actually trigger a spawn that would normally only occur by moving down into the cave. This spawn contains two assassins and two hook rats, and is much easier to handle on the top level with your backs to a wall than it is to handle while heading down the hill, with enemies on all sides. Another slightly glitchy aspect of rezzing on this map is tied in directly with a cheat spot. If you head into the keep and head to the right, there is a waist high wall that you can hop over which enemies cannot path through. If you find yourself in an exceptionally dangerous situation, you might hop in here to recharge your ult, get some ranged fire off, or just clear out a special that you could not see. The issue with this spot is that if someone has died and is about to respawn, this spot registers as being somewhere past the cave at the bottom of the map leading the respawned player to be near the second barrel deposit, making them all but impossible to revive in a timely manner. Because of this, I would suggest not using this spot if someone has died recently, unless you have a really good feel for when people will respawn. This same advice goes for the keep respawn location, as camping here will register as being within the cave, leading to some terrible respawn locations for recently deceased allies. Before leaving the top area, you're going to want to make sure to grab the purple pots in the keep, as both will be useful for completing the map. Both are upstairs in the keep, one to the far left and one to the far right of the near side. 
For a more in-depth look at potion spawn locations, check out the Weave Steam Guide made by John, linked in the description below. After having completed the first barrel, and dealt with the subsequent spawn, and handling the spawns that occur before the cave, you are going to want to deal with the second barrel fairly quickly. It is alright if you don't have a great deal of time left at this point. A chaos spawn spawns in once you touch the second barrel. It takes far too long to kill it traditionally, so you're going to want to make sure you have a battle wizard or a grail knight to efficiently ledge it immediately after triggering it. There are two spots that are good for ledging the spawn. The first is just before you enter the cave, and the second is through the cave on the right side, on the bridge. The first spot is more time efficient, but the party has to be mindful to watch the ledger's back, as enemies can come from up the hill and make their job extremely difficult. The second spot takes some time to get to, but you no longer have to worry about enemies coming from the backside. Ask your ledger what their preference is, as the only really important part is that they get the chaos spawn off the cliff on the first try. After having done this, it is fairly easy to move the barrel all the way through the tunnel. Once you move out of the tunnel, all hell breaks loose. Two assassins, plague monks, archers, another assassin after a delay, a ratling, and a hook rat will all spawn. Moving towards the second deposit will spawn another assassin, two hook rats, vestigors, a flame rat, and some archers, and completing the deposit will spawn a minotaur. Running towards the portal will spawn 11 bannermen and 4 ratlings. These spawns can be very difficult to handle, especially in the time crunch that you are likely under at this point in the weave. There are two spots that can make it slightly easier, however. The first is within the tunnel itself, as it will funnel enemies toward you from either side, and make it so that the archers and ratling have a harder time firing on you while remaining invisible. The second is a cheese spot on the right side when exiting the tunnel. Melee enemies cannot hit you there, but you are still vulnerable to assassins, the archers, and the rattling, so fighting up here is not recommended. Once you've hit this point, it is more likely that the entire party dies than it is you are able to clear out all the enemies, complete the barrel, and run to the end. In order to deal with this, I suggest doing a purple handoff with a handmaiden. To do this, have your handmaiden drink one purple pot, hand her the second one, and then have her grab the barrel and dash all the way to the deposit. After depositing the barrel, the handmaiden can continue dashing, drinking the second purple pot when necessary, all the way to the portal. Assuming you've killed enough before making this run, this essentially guarantees victory in a situation that would otherwise have been extremely difficult. In case you haven't killed enough, however, it is suggested that the rest of the party attempt to stay alive as long as possible to continue killing enemies as getting all the way to where the portal should be without getting it open is almost guaranteeing death for the handmaiden once the second purple pot runs out. The final battle takes place in the Colosseum Plateau and consists of two brief waves. The first is some horde and a warpfire thrower, and the second is a storm fiend, a rattling gunner that I hate with a fiery passion, five plague monks, and more horde. This is an extremely short final battle, so don't worry too much if you're running low on time in the first section of the weave. The first wave of the final battle is fairly easy. Kill the Warfire Thrower, and then focus on the Horde. The second wave can be annoying, but not particularly difficult. The Rattling Gun will spawn on the far side of the plateau, where the Warfire Thrower spawned, but he typically does not feel the need to drop down onto the map, opting instead to fire from where he will remain invisible. This can make him extremely hard to get rid of. If you have a shield, you can stay on the far side of the plateau, assuming you keep an eye on him and keep your block up. If you don't, it will be best to stay as close to him as possible so that he doesn't have a firing angle. If your party is really struggling to get rid of him, I would suggest that everyone stays out of his line of sight by staying extremely close to him. This will force him to drop down so that you can get rid of him. Once he's dead, you can mostly kite around together, killing plague monks here and there and watching the storm fiend kill everything else for you and then kill the storm fiend once everything else is off the map. If you follow these tips and find you're still struggling, consider watching my Weaves guidebook and introduction video, or reach out to me or any other number of players in the Ranked Weaves Discord, both of which are linked in the description below. If you thought this video was helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. More videos like this one will be going up constantly until I've covered all 160, so I'll be covering the weave you're stuck on, eventually. Take care.